So hello and welcome to In The Finance, a show where we talk all things money online, personal finance, trading and more. My name is Vus Kwabe at Vus Designer across all social media and thank you so much for joining us. And before we begin with today's video, I want to do some housekeeping first and I want to say I'm extremely sorry. I haven't been able to upload for the entire month of October and the reason behind that is I was on holiday in this place called Durban. Zimbali and I thought I was just gonna be there for about a month I mean a week or so but it turns out the place is so beautiful I ended up spending the entire month so do forgive me on that regards but I'm back in Pretoria and you are gonna be getting a video on each and every single week so make sure you are subscribed if you want to see more content on personal finance trading cryptocurrencies blockchain technologies and more so what is Bitcoin and I could probably just answer that in one sentence and say Bitcoin is a digital or virtual currency that uses a peer-to-peer -peer technology to facilitate transactions based on the blockchain. Now, as much as that is correct, um, if we just left it there, you still wouldn't know what Bitcoin is or you wouldn't really have a technical understanding to knowing what Bitcoin as a currency is. So in order for us to fully understand this digital currency, we need to go back in the beginning and find out who created it, why was it created, how does it work, and how much of an impact would it have today and in the future. And also lastly, if you bought $10 worth of Bitcoin right in the beginning, how much would it be worth today? So who is the founder of Bitcoin or who created it? In October 31st, 2008, a mysterious person named Satoshi Nakamoto. He published what is known in the blockchain industry as a white paper. A white paper that was detailing how this technology will work and ever since he never revealed his identity. So what is a white paper? Basically what it is, it's an official document from a project developers. This document is issued to the public before the initial coin offering also known as an ICO. This document is detailing how the technology will, will work, the fundamentals, total supply of that cryptocurrency. It's more like a business plan in a normal world. And I'm going to link in the description Bitcoin's white paper so you can go and check it out yourself. Bitcoin is completely decentralized and by that I mean if you own a portion of Bitcoin, that means you are your own bank. Bitcoin doesn't have a building, doesn't have a CEO, doesn't have a landline where you can phone. Uh, it's basically a software and a hardware. By software, I mean the actual code that runs Bitcoin. And the hardware is the mining equipment that is used to validate transactions. Um, that's how new Bitcoins are created. But we'll talk about that later on. Bitcoin price. This one is crazy because I'm reading my script. And as I mentioned earlier, I actually went on holiday for about a month. So I wrote this about a month ago. And at the time, Bitcoin was trading around 10,500. And today, actually a month later, it's almost double that amount. So for Bitcoin's price, let's just jump into the chart real quick and see what's happening there. So Bitcoin is currently trading around 19,400. It took a dip here um, about a week ago. Uh, but eventually now it, it, it's beginning to climb, climb up again at around this price range here and eventually it will push up to 21,000 as you can see here on the screen. So in order for us to fully understand what is Bitcoin, let's look at how it works. You see, several exchanges exist where you can buy or sell Bitcoin with your local currencies like a rand, dollar, euro, pound. Your Bitcoins are then stored on your wallet. In order for you to start sending or receiving Bitcoin, you need what is called a wallet. You can then send Bitcoins anywhere in the world without any third party. If you don't know what is a Bitcoin wallet, make sure you check out this video popping up here or I'll link it in the description. All Bitcoin transactions are recorded on a public ledger called the blockchain. I'm going to be doing a separate video titled breaking down the blockchain. So be sure you subscribe so you don't miss that specific video. So where do Bitcoins come from? New Bitcoins are generated in a form of Bitcoin mining. You see, with traditional money, government decide where and when to print new money, which causes inflation. Basic economy shows that 
Any increase in any money supply causes inflation, which reduces purchasing power. It is for that reason that a loaf of bread was way cheaper 10 years ago than what it is today. With Bitcoin, on the other hand, the total supply is limited and new Bitcoins are created in the form of Bitcoin mining. During this process, miners use a specialized software and hardware called Antiminer to mine new Bitcoins. Unlike traditional money, Bitcoin's total supply is only limited to 21 million Bitcoins. These are the only Bitcoins that will ever exist, with about 18 million Bitcoins in circulation as of today. Antiminer S9 is the latest Bitcoin mining machine created to date. These machines have become more and more advanced over the years, unlike in the olden days where we could mine Bitcoin over desktop computers. The advancement of these machines is extremely critical as the Bitcoin network automatically adjusts the math problem depending on how fast they've been mined. Bitcoin miners use these machines to solve a complex computational math problem also called as proof of work or mining. Now let's simplify Bitcoin mining. The concept is similar to traditional mining except you're not digging on the ground however you're providing computing power to the Bitcoin network. Bitcoin mining is an integral part of Bitcoin that ensures fairness while keeping the network secured. Now you may ask yourself what will happen if all Bitcoins are mined? What will happen to the network then? Will still miners be incentivized to mine Bitcoin? And the answer to that question is yes. You see, the mining algorithm is constantly changing and it's becoming more and more difficult to mine Bitcoin. It is very difficult to mine Bitcoin today, but it will be more difficult to mine Bitcoin in the future. The last Bitcoin is most likely to be mined in year 2140. After that, the mining network will be rewarded not through new Bitcoins, but through Bitcoin transaction fees. The biggest problem today with Bitcoin is scalability. In plain English, this is the ability to cope with the influx of transactions happening at the same time. As of today, Bitcoin can process about seven transactions per second. That results in around about 9.2 minutes while you're waiting for your Bitcoin transaction confirmation. Uh, it's funny that we say this is a problem because I recently wired a transaction through a bank and it took about two days for the money to reflect on the other person's account. So we can see that Bitcoin is way faster compared to your traditional banking system. Now to resolve the scalability problem, a new solution is under development and it's called Lightning Network. It's important to note that Lightning Network is not a different currency, but a second layer of technology that will enable Bitcoins to process up to 1 million transactions per second. That's insane. Now, Visa and MasterCard can process about 5,000 transactions per second. Compare that to the Lightning Network and Bitcoin of 1 million transactions per second. You can see how Bitcoin and the blockchain is winning over your traditional banking industry. Now that we've covered all that about Bitcoin, the question is, should you buy Bitcoin in 2020 or 2021 and beyond? This is not a financial advice, but I think in December 2020, we could see Bitcoin at around $20,000. It's going to try and test that resistance at $20,000. And eventually, it will break beyond it to about $21,000, $25,000, and eventually $30,000. And long term, I see Bitcoin over $100,000. So really, it's up to you to decide. So here we are at the end of this video. This was just a simple basic overview of what is Bitcoin and how it works. If you want to see more in-depth videos on personal finance, trading, cryptocurrencies, make sure you are subscribed on this channel and turn on post notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads. Until then, I will see you on the next one. Goodbye.